Alright. So one last feed that I want to do. After you save Louie in this game, you can go to the Piclopedia. And so here we have Olmar's notes and Louie's notes. So Olmar's notes will tell you, like, basically scientific discoveries about them and kind of how they function. Which is pretty fun. Louie's notes, on the other hand, for the red bull borb. Plump specimens are best spit-roasted whole, stuffed with a lime and a slab of bacon, based frequently to ensure a magnificently moist haunch. <laughs> All of Louie's notes are recipes on how to cook them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> We're going through them. Hairy bullworm. Remove all of the bullworm's hair, wrap the beast in foil along with a half lemon, and place it directly on the grill. The foil should protect the carcass from scorching, and the lemon will give the meat an elegant hint of citrus. <laughs> Orange bulborb. This bulborb's meaty flanks make for salaciously savory steaks that shouldn't be missed. <laughs> this is the best part of the game right here. <laughs> for a blissful bisque, mince the entire beast finely and stir in with heavy cream, artichoke hearts, and a pinch of black pepper. Heat slowly until piping hot. Mmm, rich and creamy. <laughs> Louis not cannibalistic. Louis a human or like a humanoid. These guys are animals, so it's like he's eating cows, like we do, basically. Snow bulldog. Best grilled and served hot over a bed of fresh spinach and crumpled blue cheese. Ugh, no blue cheese for me. Thank you. <laughs> Although difficult to prepare, this exquisite creature is more than worth the effort. Great in fajitas. <laughs> I wish I could have dwarf orange bulborb fajitas, spotty bull bear. For an unrivaled green curry, peel away the spotty bull bear's skin, pulverize the juicy innards, and stew until curiously fragrant. <laughs> dwarf bull bear. Remove innards stuffed with sage and finely aged prosciutto, and broil until golden brown. The ultimate crowd pre pleasers. Bulborb larva. This meager creature offers little meat, but its eyeballs are a local delicacy. Try them with okra and a dollop of sour cream. Ew. No, thank you. Fiery bull blacks. No stove? No problem! This sizzling beast practically cooks itself! Remember to thoroughly extinguish the steaks prior to eating. <laughs> water dumple. Deep fry water dumples without batter for all of the flavor with half the fat. But but the batter's some of the best part. It adds a nice crispy uh, texture to it. Bulbman. Grind the meat and season with allspice, salt, and ground white pepper. Press the seasoned meat into f uh, meat satchels, and then pan-fry them with onions. Prior to serving, smother the brats with Dijon mustard and sauerkraut. Buns are optional. Oof. Louie's getting creative here. Fiery Volhog. Roast this flavorful beast for several hours, letting it stew in its own succulent juices. Don't worry about overcooking this beast. It's scorch-proof. <laughs> Watery Bullhog. This beast's unrivaled moistness gives it a melt-in-the-mouth quality that's incomparable. <laughs> Armored Cannon Beetle Larva. <laughs> Carefully remove every grain of sand, peel back the exoskeleton, and slurp heartily. Eww! I'm not eating the bug raw! <laughs> Decorated Cannon Beetle. Slice the meat into tender cutlets and vigorously apply a lime and pepper rub. Pan fry until lightly crusted. Accompany with watercress and drizzle with freshly prepared tamarind sauce. <laughs> Puffy Blowhog. Slice the creature's feather light skin into triangles, deep fry until crispy, and salt generously. Makes the perfect scooping chip to accompany fresh mango salsa. <laughs> Withering Blowhog. Hang this creature on a rack and sun dry on a hot afternoon. When suitably crisp, grind the sun dried beast into powder. Makes a great substitute for cayenne or curry powder. Weird, but alright. Gatling Groink. Remove the cannon and ammo stockpile, then vigorously tenderize the meat with a heavy mallet. Stir fry with caramelized onions and figwort sprouts. Spoon over a steaming bowl of fluffy white rice and douse with chili sauce. Alright, eat that, Gatling Groink. Get it? <laughs> Pickle Pete. Alright, iridescent flint beetle. An essential flavor accentuating ingredient in gumbo and jambalaya. Also delicious in soups, broths, and marinades. Iridescent glint beetle. This precious treat is exceptionally rare. I could sell it back at home for a fortune. Then I could use the cash to upgrade my kitchen, buy galactic class ingredients, and even star in my own cooking show, The Insect Gourmet. <laughs> I, I love how Louie is like a gourmet chef in this, but is working for a freight company. What am I doing after Pikmin 2? Gotta think about it. Doodlebug. Looking for a flavor that will surprise and delight your guests? This beast's aroma may surprise your guests, but it won't be delightful. <laughs> Female Sheer Grub. 
For an unforgettable quiche, you'll slice this creature up and mix with four eggs, two vine-ripened tomatoes, dried zucchini, and generous handfuls of feta and Swiss. Bake until crusty and golden. This beast is most flavorful if caught and cooked just after laying its eggs. How do you know all of this, Louie? <laughs> Male shear grub. Spread several specimens in the bottom of a casserole dish and layer with sliced avocado. Bake until the meat is choice and the cheese is lusciously brown. <laughs> shear wig. Grate this beast into a zest and whisk with sugar, cream, and chopped dark chocolate for a lusciously indulgent mousse that's a true culinary coup de gras. <laughs> Culkin burrowed it. Broil, boil in the shell with a pinch of salt until bright red, then serve piping hot with tartar sauce. The ravenous whisker pillar. Delicious skilled to see oh this these are the, the stupid um berry bugs. Delicious skilled seared and or sauteed with scallions and a red Genovese sauce. <laughs> That's true. While all we, he was only left behind for a few days. We found him real quickly. Anode beetle. Drain the electrical charge before boiling. Although it is possible to eat an anode beetle while it is charged, doing so may result in an unpleasant tingling sensation. <laughs> it's like licking a 9-volt battery. Midtite. Flash fry with garlic and red chilies in a hot pan, then sprinkle with grated gorgonzola. Some dinner guests may find the legs unappealing, so it's best to remove them before serving. <laughs> Hermit Cromad. Shuck from the shell, bake on high heat until crispy, then dip in a pot of melted milk chocolate. What? Lip smacking sweet. I'm not getting having crab in chocolate. That sounds disgusting. Swooping Snitch Bug. Remove the wings, marinade for a well marbled steak for several hours in a chipotle marinade, then charbroil to perfection. <laughs> Bumbling Stitch Bug. Remove the wings and discard the remainder of the beast. Enjoy the luxurious wafer fin wings with fine water dumple caviar. <laughs> Careening Dirigi Bug. Pull off the balloon like air sacs. Mince with a meaty abdomen and, pan sh and shape it into small cakes. Pan sear the cakes uh, until the cakes are crusted, but be careful not to overcook the delicate meat. When ready to serve, garnish the plate with the vibrant air sacs. Even the most discerning dinner guest will be dazzled by the colorful presentation. <laughs> Antenna beetle, these are the uh, whistle bugs. Extract meat from the exoskeleton and sear on all sides in a hot wok to seal in the flavor. Top the dish off with a splash of spicy peanut sauce. Mm. The lesser spotted jelly float, S similar in taste and texture to gelatin, this jiggling mass of jelly can be sculpted into all kinds of creative shapes. As a bonus, it also doubles as a professional grade hair gel. It's the perfect cool summer treat. Greater spotted jelly float. Like a fine cheese, the aroma of this fluid floater can be oppressive, but its flavor must be experienced to be believed. Also makes it unforgettable non-dairy spread. <laughs> I know. After all these times, these guys possibly pain and killed me. It's it's great hearing recipes uh, to how to pre pre how to prepare them. I didn't find all of the uh, stuff in the game apparently. Fiery dweevil. The search for the gourmet, high-protein salad topping alternative to bacon bits is over! Grind the spicy dweevil into tasty micro-chunks and toss them generously over your salad to add instant flair and flavor. <laughs> Anno dweevil. Raw anno dweevil makes an unforgettable sushi treat, but if it is not prepared by an expert hand with exacting precision, conception could result in a jolting electrical explosion of apocalyptic proportion. Again, how do you know that? Caustic dweevil. Inedible. Effects of consumption include uncontrollable arm flailing and enthusiastic dishwashing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Munch dweevil. Exposure to it, even extreme heat doesn't seem to rid this creature of deposits of potent gas. It's probably best for everyone if you avoid eating this hazardous fare. <laughs> Volatile dweevil. This scorching species combusts upon contact with the ton. Only edible by the adventurous and asbestos and asbestos ton. <laughs> Toady Boyster. Pan sear with herbs and oil until lightly crusted on the outside and rosy on the inside. Complement the savory flavors of a light and buttery cream sauce. <laughs> Sorry, honey, I ate caustic dweevil. I need a dishwash. I don't think you have to apologize to your wife for that. Yellow Wallywog, my enemy. Beer batter and deep fry for a down home flavor you won't soon forget. Down home with the Wallywogs. Wally Wogs are best ground up, shaped into a patty, and flame broiled on a grill. Slap on tomato slices, lettuce, onions, ketchup, and slide the patty between a sesame seed bun for the ultimate beast burger experience. Challenge mode is going to take one or two streams, it won't take that long. Wogpole. Wogpoles can be eaten raw, but they're so much more flavorful when steamed or grilled. Also heavenly in risotto. Feel free to experiment with this lush ingredient. I think these are the red, blue... Yellow, and then rainbow-spotted uh, candy pop buds. I never actually threw Pikmin into those, so I guess that wouldn't count. This, conventional, this convenient purple flower secretes a dark, flavorful oil that eliminates the need for salad dressings. <laughs> Ivory candy pop bud. This elusive flower spoils within seconds of picking, making it unsuitable for cooking. 
creeping chrysanthemum. When thinly sliced, the predator's sizable bowl makes a sumptuous pizza, pizza topping. <laughs> skitter leaf. The superb amalgamation of juicy meat and leafy greens ensures that the skitter leaf will be the new spinach. <laughs> The unmarked spectralids. Spectralids don't provide a lot of meat, but the exquisitely elegant wings are surprisingly tasty, particularly when expertly prepared with a sweet candied glaze. Honey Wisp. Although the eggs are small, the yolk has a distinctly bold and tangy flavor. Try tossing a few in a pan along with your choice of meat and fresh vegetables to cook up a country scramble. <laughs> Mamuda. Inedible. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Chicken is delicious, breadbug. Breadbugs are hearty and nutritious, but also bland and unimaginative. They may be palatable in a pinch, but they hold no true culinary promise. Okay. Pellet posy. On a quest for the perfect hors d'oeuvre, slow cook this pan in wood fire oven, but be careful to only serve the tender pellet. Common gold cap. Rapturous, fresh, or sautéed, this illuminated fungus will be hot in the galaxy's trendiest restaurants. Clover. Mildly poisonous, may result in nausea, headache, fever, fatigue, chest pains, paralysis, loss of bone density, moodiness, feral rage, sauciness, dizzy dallying, strokes of brilliance, and untimely doom. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen if you eat clovers, but alright. Figwort. This titillating ingredient tastes impossibly fresh, but you must cook it immediately after picking. If you don't, it'll go bad within minutes. Dandelion. Young leaves are only suitable in garden salads. Use the flour to add color to your dishes. Seedling dandelion. Dried, roasted, or and finely ground, the root of this plant makes a passable coffee substitute. Horsetail. <laughs> Remove and discard the primitive scaly leaves, then blanch the tender stalk in a buttery broth. Foxtail. Inedible. Plagues victims with potent and debilitating cramps. Glow stem. Inedible. Known effects include uncontrollable explosions of impromptu breakdancing. <laughs> Dandelions are edible, but they don't taste good. Well, I believe it. Margaret. Can be eaten fresh out of the soil, but it's much more flavorful when incorporated into a heavenly veggie lasagna. <laughs> Fiddlehead. Sun dry the leaves for several days, then grind them into a mortar with a mortar and pestle. The resulting herb grants are aromatic, earthy flavor, and to mutton and poultry dishes. Shoot. Inedible, and yet strangely so delicious. <laughs> All right, now my favorite part, the boss, uh, the boss recipes. Empress Bulblax. For a sophisticated delicacy, make a pat de foie gras from this massively obese creature's liver and spread it over a sesame cracker. It sounds disgusting, but intriguing. Burrowing Snagrit. Slice the serpentine torso into thin melodalians, skewer it with a metal rod with hockatate onions, and barbecue over an open flame. Mmm. Beady long legs. Poisonous. Consumption results in prolonged writhing and uncontrollable mirth. Emperor Bowl Blacks. To prep the ton for cooking, marinate in olive oil and chop into cubes. Stir in a pot with carrots, potatoes, and chives. Cover and simmer in a low heat for several hours. Accompany the mouth-watering rustic stew with a hearty roll. <laughs> Binging with Babish. <laughs> <laughs> Louis recipes. I would try some of them. Giant bread bug. Although cooking this colossal beast yields a mountain of meat, every ounce of it is flavorless, only suitable for intergalactic all-you-can-eat buffets. <laughs> Pileated snagret. You haven't lived until you've tasted a mint braised snagret shank. Or if you're feeling especially saucy, stuff a bird with a can of your favorite savory nectar, throw it on the barbecue, and let the juices mingle to make a mean beverage canister snagret. <laughs> Alright, man at legs. Although this meat is a bit on the metallic side, the oil makes a mouth-watering gravy or lubricant vin vinaigrette. <laughs> Alright. Raging Bloister. Oh, Raging Bloister. I thought it was Raging Bloister. The gills are best prepared deep-fried in an herb and bread crumb batter. Also tasty poached and drenched with fine soy sauce. The Water Wraith. Inedible. Known to cause mass hysteria, followed by leg spasms and internal thunderings. Yeah, the Water Wraith has definitely caused mass hysteria to a lot of people. Segmented Cropster. Dessert meats are all the rage on Hakate. When the planet's finest chefs hear about this kind of sorbets, pies, and parfaits you can make with the paw meat of this sweet beast, they'll clamor for every morsel we bring home. I don't want dessert lobster. <laughs> my Louis voice is... Mixing with my Wesley Stickler voice, indeed. Raging long legs. Neither broiling nor baking can diminish this creature's overpowering musky scent. Only suitable for serving to unpleasant in-laws. <laughs> That'll make him leave in a hurry. And then the Titaned Weevil. Eaten raw, this predator's luxurious legs are bold and full-flavored. What a satisfying crunch. <laughs> Will we getting revenge on the beast? However, I want to point out one thing. If you look at Olimar's notes for this. Titaned Weevil. <laughs> Mandarin... Mandarin... Chinya... I can't... 
Mandara Chini Mandarknia Gargantuum, Dweevil Family. The largest memory member of the Dweevil family, this fearsome predator carries protective components and frequently exhibit offensive capabilities, an evolution that may be attributed to mere chance. Another evolutionary theory is that the chemical contents of the containers carried by Titan Dweevils contribute to possible gene splicing. While other Dweevils do, does not While other Dweevils do not seem to choose the objects they carry, the D Titan Dweevil appears to prefer shiny objects above all else. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that properly. And one other thing I want to look at. You've collected the succulent series, plunge into the juicy world of alien cuisine. Oh, we're going to see a lot of these. You've collected the nature's candy series, avant-garde veggies for modern gourmets. You've collected the xenoflora series, botanists will fog their spectacles over these wonders. You've collected the sweet tooth series, heaven on the ton, havoc on the tooth. <laughs> Worth it. You've collected the Paleontology series. Who knows what beasts left these behind? You've collected the Ancient Secret series. This old junk will make romantics weep with joy. You've collected the Cook's Arsenal series. These apparatus ought to turn a nasty prophet. You've collected the Tortured Artist series. Everyone's inner artist will crave this set. You've collected the Modern Amenities series, Advanced Technology, or Worthless Junk. You've collected the Husband's Tears series, Women Cry with Joy, Men Just Cry at the Price. <laughs> Accurate. You've collected the Space Love series, These Designs Transcend Intergalactic Cultural Barriers. You've collected the Crystallized Emotion series, With a Flashy Name, You Can Sell Anything. You've collected the Dream series. Consumers hear the word dream and open their wallets. You got the blast from the past series. My nostalgic pitch will transform these oldies into hits. You've collected the Mystical Energy series. These enigmatic reactors power this alien planet. I just want to look at one treasure, though. You've collected the massive receptacle series. Occitations <laughs> could practically live in these. You've collected the Ancient Ad series. These persuasive logos are amazing attention grabbers. You've collected the Odd Logo series. Indecipherable symbols are all the rage these days. If people send me YouTube links, I generally ignore them. <laughs> yes, that is true, because I just... All it takes is one malicious, like, hacker. And that all of a sudden, they can have your data stolen. You got the Titan Dweevil series. Etymologists and film directors will buy them by the whole load. All right. Keen of Bugs. This is what I wanted to look at for Olmar's journal. Louis is back. Somehow he survived a horrific ordeal with a freakishly large weapon wielding Titan Dweevil. I entered a hole with an army of ferocious Pikmin, grimly determined to save Louis from the Titan Dweevil. But it seems that he was perfectly fine all along. I can't understand how he managed to avoid being eaten. Hmm. He's always had an unusually close connection with insects, and I know he loves to cook them. Maybe he wasn't kidnapped after all. Could he have been controlling that beast all along? No, that's craziness! Although, he does insist now that we address him by his proper title, the King of Bugs. So that's interesting. There's a theory out there that... Because you've seen the Dweevils throughout, the throughout this game pick up, like, dead carcasses and treasures, but they don't do anything with them. But the Titan Dweevil's the exception. He's actually using the treasures to try and murder you. So some people have the theory that Louie was actually controlling the Titan Dweevil and trying to kill us. <laughs> it's an interesting theory. <laughs> but I don't know how accurate that is. Anyhow, that is Pikmin 2 Story Mode. We got all the treasures in uh, exactly 20 days. Actually, just... We didn't actually attempt day 20, so it was actually 19 days that we grabbed it all. That's awesome. I've done, that was pretty fast for me. Yeah, next week we will start attempting challenge mode, which is, I think, 30 small caves that are timed. So you have to get out of them within a certain time limit, basically. It's kind of like an escape the cave, but there are treasures along the way. To perfect all of those, you don't actually need to collect the treasures. You just need to get out without losing any Pikmin. So that's what I'll be trying to do. And we will get a special reward if we do that. So... <laughs> That'll be fun. This was... I had a, I actually enjoyed the Pikmin 2 No Deaths run more than I thought. Like, I thought I would enjoy it a little bit, but then hate myself by the end. No, honestly, 
that wasn't too bad. I, I think the Dream Den is the nastiest dungeon, and now I would say Submerged Castle is second. I thought Hole of Heroes was going to be a lot harder than that, but it actually wasn't too bad. So, well, we are definitely out of time for this stream. We've been streaming for four and a half hours. Definitely a lot more than I usually do it. Thank you all for joining in. This was a lot of fun. I'm so glad we got to finish the game today, but of course... More content awaits next weekend. And also, starting Monday, I'm going to start playing a new stream series, Hollow Knight. Definitely tune in for that. It's, I'm sure it's going to be fun. I've heard great things about that. So, until next time, everybody, I wish you all a fantastic rest of your day, and God bless. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.